What's up guys? Today I'm going to be doing another demonstration and install video similar to what I did with the door bushings. Today's going to be a Garage Star temperature sandwich plate. And what that is, is a very simple part that's extremely easy to install that allows you to run an aftermarket water temperature gauge without any drilling or tapping or anything crazy like that. Uh, before I get into the actual install, I want to give you a demonstration on why you would want an aftermarket water temperature gauge. Because I'm going to start the engine, I'm going to let it warm up, and I'm going to show you how the stock gauge reads compared to how the Innovate gauge reads. And I actually have my radiator fan disconnected, so it's going to let it get a little bit hotter than it normally would at idle, just to kind of show you um, why you want an accurate water temperature gauge, especially if you're driving your car hard, but I like to drive my car very hard. So we're starting off at about 110 degrees stock gauge still showing full cold which is normal <laughs> temperature is now at 200 stock thermostat is completely open stock temperature gauge is still in the same exact spot so we're still at a safe temperature uh, but let's go ahead and let this thing get a little bit hotter and see what happens but well, we're now at over 220 getting close to 230 stock temperature gauge still in the same exact location that's called a non-linear gauge it's gonna stick at that same spot who knows for how long, you know, almost at 230 degrees and it's not even showing that the engine is getting too hot. Uh, please don't try unplugging your fans and seeing how hot your Miata engine will get and then do damage to your engine and blame me for it. That's what you have me for, so I can break things and then I can tell you how I broke them and then you can not do that same thing. So I'm going to plug my fans back in and get this thing back down to normal temperature and get on with the install. Step one. Jack up the car and put it on a jack stand. We're gonna do this so we can easily drain some of the coolant out so we don't end up spilling everywhere. Uh, always use a jack stand. Always, 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 always. Earthquake test. Next up, we're gonna drain some coolant. Grab your catch pan of choice. Toss it right under the radiator. Please make sure your car is already cooled off when you're doing this. And then come up here to the bottom of your radiator with your Phillips head screwdriver. You're gonna have a drain plug. You're gonna have to undo the cap. Then that will let the water drain. After the radiator is done draining, don't forget to put your plug back in. Next up, go ahead and remove your upper radiator hose. Now that we drain the radiator, we don't have to worry about spilling coolant everywhere. Pulling that off. After that, remove the plug for your thermal switch. This switch is what will automatically turn your radiator fan on when your coolant gets too hot, even if your ECU does not do it. After that, two 12 millimeter bolts, one on either side of your thermostat housing. We remove those bolts. Add a little bracket there. You won't be able to get that off because it's gonna be stuck. gasket on here is kind of nasty. You're going to have to make sure to clean all this old gasket off before you put your new gaskets on, which are included with the new sandwich plate. I like to very carefully use a razor blade. That'll take off most of the old gasket. So this comes with all new hardware and gaskets. It's going to sit right there. Your stock piece is going to go right on top of it. And this is going to allow you to plumb in your aftermarket water temperature gauge. 
This is also a good time to replace your thermostat, which is right here, if it's old. Not a bad idea, and it's a really inexpensive part. Drop on one of your brand new gaskets. Next, you're gonna put on the actual sandwich plate. After that, you're gonna install another gasket on top like that. Put your water neck back on. Drop in your new hardware. Now that your bolts are hand tight, I'm gonna to try to give you an idea of how tight you wanna make these so you don't over torque them. Uh, I've seen people strip the threads and break these bolts and it's, it's really unnecessary. A lot of people tend to really over tighten things to make sure they don't come loose. Um, you really just wanna get a feel for how tight to make certain size bolts. So these are basically hand tight. I'm gonna give it about another 90 degrees on the ratchet, just like that. And I mean, I could just go just with my thumb not using much force at all, just tight enough to snug it down. The threads are aluminum, so they can strip pretty easily. If the housing leaks, you can make the bolts a little bit tighter, snug them up just until it stops leaking, and that's about it. You're gonna put it back together, throw that hose on, plug your thermal switch back in, Don't forget to put your spring clamps back in place. Once you fill the radiator all the way up, go ahead and start the engine. After it's all the way warmed up, make sure your radiator is full. Don't forget to put your cap back on. And you're done. You're ready for an aftermarket water temperature gauge. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, check out Garage Star's website. They got a lot of cool products on there. Until next time, see you soon. Almost forgot the most important part of the whole install. Stay fresh, my friends.